meeting is being recorded. Great. Well, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for uh, being able to be here today. Uh, I'm Bryden, and I am the chair. Uh, it's great to see uh, we have some new folks joining us. Um, sorry, I missed you all when you started last uh, month, uh, but it's, uh, it's just a treat to have you. Um, let's uh, get started. I officially call this meeting to order at 4.30. And let's go around and see who we have for roll call. We have myself, Bryden Cook. We have Dale Bernard, Tom Kurtz, Katie McDonald, Bruce Montgomery. Uh, let's see, and Renee, uh, Renee, apologies. I'm not sure about your last name there. Um, That's okay, it's Sean Beck, we're okay. Sean Beck, great, thank you. Uh, and Rhea. Uh, those are our board members. And then we also have uh, Sheila Conroy as a guest. And of course, see oh, me, but thank you for council, letting me be here. Thank you, Sheila. Um, and of course, Councilwoman uh, Susie at Al Gofari. Great, y'all. Well, um, do we have any public uh, to be heard this time around? I'm not aware of any public invited to be heard. Okay. Well then, um, we'll look at the uh, the minutes now. Um, hopefully, everyone's had a chance to uh, take a look at the minutes from last month. Uh, any questions or comments on that? Uh, if not, then um, I, can we hear a motion to approve them? I move that we approve the minutes, last month's minutes. Thank you, Bruce. Do we have a second? A second. Thanks, Katie. Great, all in favor, please raise your hands. Excellent. Looks like we have unanimous. Um, that has passed. There we go. Great, and we will move on now to uh, the accessions with Eric. I will share my screen. All right, can you all see the uh, heading page, January 2022 accessions? Yes. All right. So we've got quite a few this uh, time around, a lot of which are loans, what were loans for our Longmont 150 exhibit that have been converted to um, donations. So but, uh, feel free to ask questions as we, as we go. Uh, so the first item is one of these uh, was part of the uh, Longmont 150 exhibit, uh, things related to the Northern Arapaho, our new sister city. Uh, so we have a Northern Arapaho flag, uh, some magazines produced by the Northern Arapaho, and then two photographs that were taken by the chair of Sister Cities, uh, Janet Rebum, that were both included in the um, Longmont 150 exhibit and that we felt like were really great photos, particularly the one of the uh, Northern Arapaho children uh, braiding hair in front of the mural in Longmont of, of hair braiding. Just kind of a, a really cool photo. So um, that is our first item related to the Longmont 150. Next up, we've got some more Longmont 150. These are objects actually produced by the city of Longmont for Longmont 150. We have a beer glass, a it's sticker. It's empty, Eric. It, it is, yes. They're, they're, <laughs> You missed the whole array of empty beer glasses that we had coming in on the on the front side of the exhibit. Uh, so this is one on the back side, and then a challenge coin that the city produced. Um, city of Longmont, 150 years. So these are all collateral, basically produced by the city for celebrating the 150th. Next, and I believe this is our last. Uh, accession for 2021, so it came in before December 31. <clears throat> um, also from Longmont 150, uh, 
these are items related to uh, the Fast Tracks uh, project that has been ongoing since uh, 2004 to um, get rail to Longmont. Uh, might happen by Longmont 200, we will see. Uh, but uh, these are all things that actually came from the um, planning department. We borrowed them and they agreed they didn't uh, need them. So thought they were appropriate to add to the museum's collection. Um, then we have the sticker ball that was in uh, Longmont 150 produced, uh, created by Sticker Giant, uh, which is a uh, local business. Uh, somebody is trying to ask a question. Go ahead if you are. All right. Um, and then some just individual sticker packs also from Sticker Giant. Um, next up, uh, again from Longmont 150, uh, this is a demonstration fiber optic cable that uh, uh, Longmont Power and Communications Next Light created for the Longmont 150 exhibit. And it seemed like something we might want to show again. So we went ahead and uh, recommended it for accession. Um, then we have a number of photographs, uh, digital photos taken in 2003 and 2002 at various LBGTQ events. Um, I believe one of these, this one of the man wrapped in the uh, pride flag was displayed in Longmont 150. The others were also you know, in consideration. We felt like all of these seemed appropriate to add to the museum's collection. These are digital photos, um, as were uh, the ones earlier. Um, then this um, is a, a bit more of a, of a difficult topic. Uh, these were uh, white supremacist flyers, as well as a, a newspaper article that kind of gives some context that were distributed in Longmont in 2002. Um, and uh, we felt like it was, it was appropriate to add those to the collection because not just about you know, positive history, but we also need to document negative aspects of Longmont history as well. Um, then uh, a non-Longmont 150 item, although it was kind of spurred, I think, by the Longmont 150 uh, exhibit, which had some Longmont Bottling Works bottles in it, um, but another one was donated um, in January uh, to the museum. Uh, this, we've got quite a, uh, we, we have 15 now Longmont Bottling Works bottles, but only one other like this. So um, mm -hmm. appropriate to have that. And finally, we've got uh, four more digital photographs. Um, this one, uh, number two, uh, was used in the Longmont 150 exhibit. And the others, again, document the Chinese New Year celebration, one of the larger cultural celebrations in Longmont. Um, so any questions that folks have, um, I can stop sharing so that if people want to uh, uh, see each other while we're, while we're discussing it, we can do that. Eric? Thanks. Yes. I, yeah. I have a, I'm just curious, since all of these accessions, all of these things are being an accession to our permanent collection from the 150th, I was just wondering how does that compare to, for instance, the World War I exhibit? I mean, did we get some, some items through that? I mean, the exhibits that we do that focus on Longmont yeah, uh, this is certainly the most that I can remember that we've had. And there's actually even a couple of more that um, there's at least one more that just didn't make it in for this, this meeting. And then we'll have a couple other possibilities that we're still considering it. Um, so this is I was just curious um, more. We did get, I think, maybe one or two for the World War One. Um, but um, I think because it was a little more narrow, maybe we didn't get as much. Um, and we did a lot more active collecting for Longmont 150 and 
going out and loans. So there was a lot more on loan that seemed like we could we could ask at the end of the exhibit and see if they'd be interested in doing it. They look good. Uh, Eric, uh, comment on uh, the LGBTQ event photos. Uh -huh. uh, less about the event and more of an editorial thing. Um, the initialism is uh, written down, it's LBGTQ, and it should be LGBTQ. Mm. All right, thank you. Common, if that's what gets put into something, then we want to make sure we get the initialism right. Yes, yes, I, I've seen it several, there's several different versions of it, but I will make sure Ah, okay. the right, the right one for um, for this, in fact, I may check with the photographer and see what uh, what they prefer. Any other uh, comments or uh, questions about these? Uh, if not, can uh, can we hear a motion to uh, approve them? I so move. Thanks, Dale. Uh, second? I'll second. Thanks, Rhea. Uh, all in favor, raise your hand. And it looks like all in favor. Uh, it looks like it's unanimous. Great. Thank you. <laughs> um, that passes unanimously. Next up, we're going to move on to report of the museum director. Hello, everybody. Um, when I when I read the report, I'm kind of looking over here. So let me know if you've got any questions. Just holler at me um, since I'm not keeping an eye on on all of you while I'm reading this. Um, for those who might be new to this, I um, typically don't read every word of the report, but certainly open for. Uh, questions on any of it, um, and we can add things to it as well if, if need be. Uh, so the first section of uh, this particular report is about the development activities. So maybe just a little bit of a background that um, in the last couple of years now, um, what we have gone through is that uh, the museum received um, SEFD tier two recognition. And as a result of making the bump, well, maybe I should go back even further. SCFD is the Scientific Cultural Facilities District um, that is the seven county district out of um, Denver, surrounding Denver, where um, tax dollars are um, uh, given to cultural organizations. And so we receive a uh, uh, a significant amount of money from that. It used to be about thirty thousand dollars, twenty-five to twenty-five-ish thousand dollars, and when we bumped into tier two, that gave us a significantly more amount of money. Um, oosh, I'm not going to remember the numbers off the top of my head, but about two hundred thousand dollars, I think, in the last year. And with those dollars, we ended up uh, hiring a, a development director, and so. Um, things that we've never been able to accomplish in the past, we've been able to do in this past year. Um, and so I, I expect that this portion of the grant is going to get, I mean, this, re, this portion of the, the report is going to get more and more robust as she does her work. Megan is our, our new development director. So we've got, um, we were awarded $200,000 in the state arts relief funds through the Colorado Creative Industries. We also um, had a private donation of $10,000 in our year in giving. Uh, so the year in Colorado gives amount total was $13,622. Um, we currently have 693 active members. And I think that that actually is um, down from a high of about 800, if I remember off the top of my head that we were able to um, have during our Ansel Adams exhibition, which is by far one of the most popular exhibitions that we've had to date. So that we are only down by a hundred uh, members is actually, I think, really, really good news. Um, and I expect that as you know, we recover from uh, the coronavirus, that that number is gonna just really go up and up and up. 
Um, we've also applied for a Longmont Community Foundation Living Give grant. And then we're also compiling information for our annual report, um, which I, I think is just gonna, what we intend to do with that is really try to graph out um, uh, statistics and, and data that we are able to collect about um, not only the uh, development work that we're doing and fundraising, but also attendance and the number of people that we're reaching through our educational programs and all of that. This is a, a report that isn't actually required of us by anybody, but as um, we develop more of a program for our um, fundraising arm, it's a really, really useful tool to be able to talk to people about who we are and what we do and where our strengths are. And so with um, Megan coming on board, she's gonna help us develop that annual report. And I also have one thing to add, since we put this together, just this morning, I got notification that we uh, received money from our um, supplemental grant for the Shuttered Venues Operator Grant. And that is an additional about $100,000. So we are doing really, really well with our grant applications over the past year. Um, but as we were talking about um, with Susie before the, the meeting actually started, a lot of these are one-time grants. They're, it's one-time funding that is available as a result of the coronavirus, as a result of the way that the economy took a dive. And so we can't really expect this to be ongoing dollars. Um, there's a lot of people at the national level that are really lobbying for this to be ongoing dollars and that um, you know organizations like ours really need some, some uh, sustaining funding in order to be able to um, move forward the things that we've been growing on in the past um, couple of years. So keep your fingers crossed on that, but nothing, nothing is um, for sure at the moment. So we're doing the best that we can to leverage the dollars that we are, are have been awarded. So um, more to come when it comes to how we're going to spend those dollars, because a lot of them are in approval processes at the moment. In our education department, um, we in the last month, basically the big thing that we worked on was the Santa brunch. And so you can see some details about the Santa brunch and um, how exciting that was. And hopefully um, some of you saw the article in the newspaper about it because it was super cute. The picture that they um, had on the front page was very adorable. Um, and so there's some details about that. And then, um, going on to the collections um, piece the, um, in the budget cycle from last year we were awarded some funds to be able to move our textile storage so again for some of you who are new to the board um, we were able to build an off-site collections facility a couple of years ago with some money that the city um, uh, the, the city allowed the city gave us some money to be able to build the fill, the building, but mostly it was because they kicked us out of the old building. So, um, you know, it's good and bad. Anyway, it's an offsite facility that at some point we will have all of you there. Some of you have seen it before, and and um, we'll invite the new members to see it again. Um, but left at the museum is still our textile storage. So the uh, textile storage has kind of its own area in the museum. And when we moved uh, the collections from our offsite storage, our temporary offsite storage to the new offsite storage permanent building, the textile storage was not included in that. And so we were granted some funds to be able to make that move. And so Eric has been working really hard to be able to pull all of those you know, logistics together, um, and we'll be starting that process really soon. Um, this month, we've also been able, because of some of the uh, dollars that we've received, um, we're working on some compact storage that um, will help us. I don't know if you know about compact storage. Some of you saw it out at the collection center, but essentially it is um, storage that's on rollers. So it can move together and be super compact or you can open it up and walk down the aisles to see the things that are in storage. Um, and so we've bought some new carriages for that. And hopefully we're gonna be buying um, a few more to be able to uh, store all of those collections. Um, and then we're also trying to fit a few more of the tours um, that I've been talking about for 
city council and city administration to be able to see exactly what's been going on out there at the museum collections. Um, Wait, where is the uh, where is the offsite center? It's a it's about five miles away from the museum. It is down um, one nineteen uh, on County Highway five. Um, it's not that easy to find, and if you Google it, it's going to take you to the wrong place. So when we when we do a tour, what we try to do is um, you know either caravan or or carpool or something like that, so that we get people to the right place. If you're familiar, Bruce, with the um, the shooting range, we're right behind the shooting range on County Highway 5. Okay. Does that help? <laughs> no, <laughs> but it's out east, right? It's out east yeah. for 25? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, it's about five yeah. miles east. Yeah. yeah. And and it's about 15,000 square feet. We The whole building is about 20,000 square feet and 5,000 of that is dedicated to um, police uh, evidence storage. And then the 15,000 is dedicated to the museum. So, and it's, you know, state of the art, you know, humidification and um, uh, state of the art storage furniture and all of that. So we feel really lucky to have that space. And yeah. so it'll be a nice transition. I remember when it was in the cheese importers uh, current, yeah. We got kicked out the of the buildings. cheese importers. <laughs> Because, you know, those are uh, uh, high real estate values there. Yeah. So <laughs> we got kicked out of that. And so right. we, but it's a, it's a great, it's been, I mean, you can ask Eric about it. He should probably speak more, more um, uh, directly to it. But ultimately, I feel like it's been a really great, great place for us because we're right by the, the shooting range. It feels really secure. It's, um, it's really great facilities. Eric, do you want to add anything? Um, yeah, you gotta dodge the bullets, though, don't you? <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> luckily, yeah. luckily, they the it's an indoor shooting range, so no bullets. <laughs> they do have some exercises periodically, so we get some uh, paint paintball kind of things. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, it's been a great facility for us, and we'll definitely do another advisory board meeting out there at some point. Uh, uh, so that the new folks can, can take a look at it. Yeah, I think it'll be fun. What else? Let's see, for uh, collections, um, we've, Eric continues to present at local uh, groups um, and he continues to sell the Longmont 150 uh, book that he's written. And so um, if new folks, if you don't have a copy of that book, let me know. And we'll see what we can do to get you a copy of the book. Um, and then... Elizabeth Myers, who is our visitor services manager, she's done a great job of being able to put that um, on, uh, on the website so that pe people can buy it offsite as well. In our exhibitions, um, we've got four new interns that are starting next semester, two paid and two unpaid. Um, and so the names are listed there. And then um, they help tremendously uh, Jared Thompson, who's the curator in exhibitions, does a really, really good job of being a mentor for young people who are interested in exhibitions and, and um, museums. And so he's able to really do a great um, mentoring job working with interns. Um, and so we've just turned over exhibitions. We've got Longmont 150 has moved out. And just yesterday, if I remember correctly, we received the new exhibition, which is the Washi um, Japanese paper um, exhibition that's going to be opening soon. Um, and that will open on January the 28th. Ultimately, we had uh, hoped to have a, a reception um, to bring everybody in to celebrate the opening of that exhibition, but given the numbers that we've seen lately with um, uh, the coronavirus, we've decided to postpone that. So we're not gonna be help, um, having the opening right away, but we're gonna be keeping an eye on the, the numbers. And once we see those numbers start going down, we'll, we'll find a date that we can really bring people in and, and, and celebrate the opening of that exhibit. It's gonna be beautiful. We're really, really excited about it. Um, so look forward to that. 
And then the things that sort of continue in the background are the TP to Tiny House exhibition, which is um, basically an, an architecture F exhibition, but really um, looking at architecture over time and the way that it um, uh, you know, pulls from the environment and the, the materials that are needed for, for building. And then we've also got um, an exhibit to look forward to that opens in January of 2023. And that's gonna be an indigenous artist exhibition that um, Greg Deal is gonna curate for us. And um, I don't know if you guys might be familiar with Greg, but he is a, a pretty quite famous um, indigenous artist who lives in Colorado Springs. And we've met with him a couple of times and he is going to be a fantastic curator for us and for this exhibition. So we're really looking forward to that. In our auditorium programming, um, we've got some grant monies that um, have been helping us with some upgrades, uh, specifically with lighting um, and the lighting instruments and some of the digital uh, design instruments that are used for that programming. So we're looking forward to bringing those on board soon. I don't know if you guys know, but we've got this funny thing with the uh, supply chain problem at the moment. So a lot of these things are sort of backed up, but we're trying really hard to, to get them online as soon as we can. Um, we uh, have returned to in-person programming in September, and we really hope that um, ultimately that's going to, we're going to be able to continue to make that happen. We do have a lot of um, COVID protocols in place. And in the last fall, we, we saw the biggest season we've had yet which is, I think, something to really be proud of, that in terms of our attendance and in terms of our ticket revenue, the, our, last, our last fall was the best yet. And that was during a pandemic. So <laughs> I think it's pretty, um, it's so to uh, continue that success and make it grow as, things open up a little bit more. Um, so you can see then um, in the report, more details about what those numbers look like, um, total number four. I'll let you guys read those details for yourselves. Um, and in terms of our visitor services, um, last month, um, our gift shop did really, really well. And um, I think that that also feels like a pretty big accomplishment. We, in, you know, anecdotally, we had people coming to the gift shop and telling us that they were coming for the gift shop. So our gift shop is starting to take on its own kind of character and reputation. So that is a big sign of success. Um, and so I think that we're going to be able to, to really... Um, look at the strengths of that and, and grow the strengths of that, um, especially with uh, some of the things with the, uh, you know, people, people want those things and they're buying them before the exhibit opens. So that's really good. Um, we've got some new uh, uh, people, um, staff members at the front desk and we're hoping to hire a few more. Um, and then in our marketing department, we, you know, the, the um, program catalog, our newsletter, um, I don't know if you guys have received yours yet. They have, um, they're in the mail if you've not received yours yet. And I think it's a really, I'm always really proud when I see the newsletter because it feels like the, just the culmination of all the wonderful work that the staff does. And you get to see the breadth of the programming that happens, the educational programs that happen, um, what to look forward to in the future. It's a beautiful publication that I think um, really gives you a, a snapshot of who the museum is. So look forward to that if you don't have it already. Um, and then we're working hard on all of the other collateral that, that sort of um, flows out of the beginning of a season. Um, so you can look forward to postcards and that sort of thing. Long ago and far away, we applied for um, a mask exception policy through the Boulder County Public Health. Um, and ultimately the, the rationale for that was not that we could go maskless, but that in fact, we 
ask for uh, people's vaccination cards, um, vaccination status. Did somebody have a question? I'm sorry. I thought I heard somebody's voice. Just shout at me if you do, no problem. Um, so what this allows us to do is ask people if they are vaccinated or not. And if they're not vaccinated, then th unfortunately they're not gonna be able to attend one of our um, performances in the auditorium. Um, the, what this allows us to do is that people will remain masked, especially in 250 seat auditorium where you're sitting right next to a stranger. It's smart, it's wise, it's health conscious to remain masked, even if you're vaccinated, even if you're boosted. Um, but we, we are then able to say that we are um, a verified facility, that we are able to check people's vaccination status. And so we'll be announcing that very soon. In fact, probably within the next week or so, you'll see a notification about that. Um, and, you know, when we originally um, requested this variance, what we were hoping for is that people would um, feel more comfortable in the auditorium and buying tickets to come to a public facility if they knew that everybody around them was vaccinated. Well, you know, Tom, I think your hand up and Renee, your hand up is too. So I don't know who is first. Tom, why don't you go? Well, I just had a question uh, yeah. with that new policy of uh, verification of vaccination. Are those programs going to be virtual at all so that people that still don't feel comfortable would be able to pay a fee or something and see those? That's a it great... seemed like we did that somewhere in the past. Like in the recent yeah. years, but so I so that's remember. a great that's Tom. That's a really good question and something that we should probably look in, into because what happened during you know kind of the height of the the pandemic is that we offered all of our programs for free and we live streamed them. What we didn't do is try to figure out how to charge money for a ticketed, you know, for a live stream event. It's challenging. It's difficult. And so um, I've had other people ask me the same question. So I think it, it sort of, I think probably we need to look into this to see what we might be able to do for, for folks who, as you said, they're still not comfortable. Um, so I will make a point of looking into that. I appreciate the question. Renee, did you have a question? Yes. So I don't, I don't want to go against um, whatever the county public health is. So just from an ER perspective, um, ER nurse. So we uh, are still seeing quite a bit of transmission <laughs> between people who are vaccinated and um, if they are maskless, uh, it is substantial and that includes booster. So I'm just concerned that we may not, well, I guess my question is, how are we going to word this to the public and what level of vaccination do you, will you all state is completely vaccinated? Like, does that include the booster? Right. <laughs> We had a, a long conversation uh, with the uh, assistant city manager and the uh, communications manager about this. And at this moment, you know, we're taking all of our leads from Boulder County Health. Um, and at this moment, uh, fully vaccinated does not include the booster, but that could change any day now. So we will follow suit as soon as, as that changes. Um, uh, I don't, you may have missed what I was um, trying to say with this exception, but although Boulder County Health, um, it's, it's complicated. We had, we applied for this through what was called the mass exception qualification, right? But we never intended for us to actually not mask. What we were hoping for is to be able to ask for people's vaccination. And that's what Boulder County approved. 
that we Got can it. ask for people's um, status of vaccination, but we still require masks. So to your point, even mm -hmm. you know, vaccinated and boosted people will be wearing masks in the auditorium. Okay, Does that, that sounds good. Question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That okay. sounds good. Thank you so much. I think I was a little unclear no. as to like if we would still ask for masks or not. And they have and to wear they have to wear a mask and they have to be vaccinated. And they okay, well, perfect. they have okay, they have to they have to wear a mask and they have to be fully vaccinated. Now the, the <laughs> thing is that fully vaccinated is a changing target, right? Yes, it is. Absolutely. Susie, did you have a question? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, actually, Thank you I, for had that a, question. I, I had a it. comment. Um, and so Centennial Ballet, they, you know, I've done work with them in the past. They um, street, live streamed their events um, for a fee. So I was able to watch their Nutcracker and, you know, their fall and spring galas. So they, they have really good, like I've been able to do it with ease and, you know, I pay my fee and then I'm able to have access. So I don't know if you wanted to reach out, if you're kind of looking about what that structure would look like, they might be a good contact. Great, we'll talk to them. We will talk to them. What we had done um, is that, you know, like I said, during the height of the pandemic, everything was free and we just did a live stream. And then after that, anything that was free, we live streamed. But anything that was a ticketed event, we didn't live stream. Um, so I do think that what we're seeing now, especially with the surge, is that we should probably look into how we might be able to do, you know, that combination. Hey, I'm and then one, Bruce, I'm, I'm sorry, thinking, did you? Yeah, I, I think that would be a good idea okay. because, you know, you don't want to lose these. Um, oh, can you hear me okay? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Be able to lose um, any kind of funding. And I think that... Um, you know, just having that that oper that option for people, I, I really think people would, would take up on that. Part of what we were responding to, um, you know, this is this has gone like this, right? And part of what we were responding to is that at some point people were just like, I don't want to do anything online anymore. Get me away from a computer, blah, 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 blah. But it's still, it's it's such a moving target. So I think you're right, Susie, that that if we can essentially have a, a kind of hybrid, um, then that probably really addresses the most people we possibly can. Yep. And Bruce, I'm sorry, did you have a question? I interrupted you at some point. Oh, no, no, no. I, I was just gonna say that the, the Boulder music venues do exactly what you're talking about. It's been, um, we've been trying to navigate this because part of it is that we are a public organization. So, you know, we're city funded. And, and so a, a lot of private organizations can just come out and do whatever protocols that they want to do. So we have to be able to follow the guidelines that, that um, are kind of prescribed to us. And so this was part of the way that we felt like we would be able to again, ask for vaccinations and be able to require masks. And so Boulder County Public Health uh, approved that and we're just now, and then this has been a while ago. And so um, we're just now implementing it with our new uh, season starting, I think February the 3rd is when we're officially gonna be launching this new policy. Yeah. And the, the um, recreation center and the I experienced this a little bit. I, we expect a little bit of backlash and, you know, that's kind of to, to be expected. Um, but we're, our job really is to be the, the um, most responsible that we possibly can. And that's where we're coming from with this. It's, it's one thing to, you know, go in really quickly and, you know, buy something and get out, but it's another thing to sit next to a stranger for two hours during a performance, you know? So that's where we really feel like we are obligated to, to be as um, precautious as we can. Any other questions about that before I move on? Okie doke. Um, let's see. Um, oh, the only thing left then on the report is the art and public places portion of, um, of what we're doing. And so, uh, as part of the Longmont 150, the city commissioned a piece by Julie Lydell 
And so this is essentially a, a poster that you'll be able to buy. Um, and it is, and there's a, a photograph that's in, included in the report um, that is basically kind of a, 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 a mid-mod um, rendition of the of Long's Peak with um, Longmont across the top of it. Um, and so Sandy Cedar was really involved with this and we're really excited about the outcome. I think it's a beautiful poster. Um, and then we've got uh, uh, Angela, the Angela Bro with Art Places Administration. Um, she's been working to working with artist DJ Drake to talk about potential collaboration uh, for soul education and a performance. Um, and then we've also got um, the cultural plan that is sort of on the horizon. This is um, something that we've been talking about for a long time now and haven't really had the funding to kind of gel this project. Um, but essentially a cultural plan would be something that is um, really community driven and that we get a lot of feedback from different artists and uh, creators in the community to understand sort of what a strategic plan can look like going forward um, in the city of Longmont. And so um, Art and Public Places will provide a little bit of funding. The uh, city manager's office would provide a little funding and the museum would provide a little funding. And then the uh, Long, Longmont Downtown Development Authority would provide a little funding to be able to make this happen. Um, and it's good timing because we're also revisiting the comprehensive plan um, Envision Longmont uh, for the whole of the city. And so uh, ideally what will happen is that the Envision Longmont planning will happen in conjunction with the cultural plan and we'll be able to make sure that those things speak to each other. That's all I got for my director's report. Does anybody have any other questions for me? Okie doke. I really appreciate all of your very thoughtful questions. So keep them coming. So we make sure that everybody knows what's going on. Great. Thank you, Kim. Thanks, um, Brighton. Uh, report of the chair is up next. Uh, there is none. I have nothing to report. Um, for those of you who are new, uh, that is pretty common. Um, there's not a lot of uh, uh, chair reporting going on uh, here. So we will move on now to uh, unfinished business, the interpretive plan adoption. Who is uh, bringing this up? I guess that's me. This is something that we shared a couple of um, meetings ago. This was a project that was um, uh, a result of our strategic planning and um, sort of trying to understand, you know, we've got a very broad uh, mission statement. So how, how in the heck does it help us make good decisions? And so we contracted with a, a very well-respected uh, co consultant who walked us through this interpretive plan. And ultimately, it really helped all of us. I think as a, as a uh, staff, we all agreed that this was such a, a great tool to be able to reflect on and make decisions about. And um, without going into too much detail, because um, I think you all have, have the document, um, basically what she was able to draw out of all of the work that we currently do, you know, not recreating anything, not uh, uh, changing what we do, but just sort of reframing what we do, she was able to draw out um, two major themes. One was Long Lot Proud and the other was uh, Bring the Beyond. And so, you know, we do have a very broad mission statement and to be able to kind of funnel it through those lenses really helps us understand why we do what we do. We're not just about Longmont and Longmont history. We are also about bringing international all national um, uh, content and culture to Longmont for Longmont to have in their backyard. And so I think that this has been a really good um, report for us to be able to reflect upon internally. And what I would hope to um, ask you all to do tonight is to sort of um, put your stamp of approval on it as 
uh, a good document for us to be able to kind of um, guide our ship by, if you will. So I, I throw it to you if you all want to be able to make a motion and approve the plan. Well, just, or if just, you have uh, questions for me, yeah. Go just, ahead, Bruce. Uh, yeah, just to make sure you, you feel this uh, gives you the continued flexibility to do what you've been doing in the past, from Ansel Adams to in, Exhibit 150. Yeah, in fact, I, I feel like part of what we experienced internally, especially, is um, how we could justify both of those things. And what this does for us is that it really gives us the frame and the vocabulary to understand why we're doing that. And so, um, you know, a, a traditional history museum would focus just on Long Island. An art museum might focus on, you know, national, international artists. We are an interdisciplinary uh, institution. And so being able to have that framework to make decisions and have that flexibility that you're talking about, I think has become a really useful tool for us. Okay, sounds good. That's also very good for fundraising too, to have that. Exactly, uh, right. Yeah. Sounds great. Dale, go ahead. You're, you're muted, Dale, Dale, you're muted. Still muted. You're still muted. Dale, Dale, you're muted, Steel. Uh, bottom Man. left hand. Sorry. I, I realize this is um, primarily an internal document, but I think it is so well written and so clear that anybody could learn an awful lot about the museum and what we're about just by reading it. So kudos to whoever wrote it. I, th I thought it was beautifully written and, and really well put together. That's having really... said that, having said I... that though, I still, the same thing I said before about Appendix A goes, you left out in the history of the museum, you talk about whoever talks about the museum, and they don't move it to the present site. And then all of a sudden they're building the Stewart Auditorium. And I just think it needs a sentence of when the museum located to its present location. So yeah, that's that, my that was, only. A, that was a big pain in the ass, I can tell you. I was, <laughs> I was on the board then. <laughs> it was a pain in the ass. <laughs> in a relevant Dale, state. I, yeah. <laughs> for the record <laughs> i was gonna say can we make sure that's in the minutes this let's remember <laughs> dale thank you for those comments and i agree with you i think that um our our consultant is beth kaminsky and she's worked for a number of museums and one of her strengths is writing and so i think that it comes through in, in this report um and I can't remember, um, uh, Katie, maybe it was you who last time when we were talking about it, you said, maybe we should just share this on the website. So, um, you know, with a few modifications like you're talking about, Dale, maybe it's totally appropriate to share on the website and just say, you know, this is our vision. So we'll talk about that. Any other uh, questions or comments uh, before we look at voting at this? I do think especially like the two lenses, this idea of like Longmont Proud and Bring the Beyond would be really nice to share out with the public because I think like there might be certain people who are like, oh, like I'm not that interested in Longmont history. Thus the museum is not for me. And this idea that like it is so much more than that. Um, I think can be a really important idea and especially like bringing people from other counties in like why is the Longmont Museum relevant to you as well and I know that's part of like um, the level two is like needing to bring in like people from the outside as well and so I right. think those two lenses just like are really quick easy phrases that anyone can get 
um, and can kind of capture that vision for people. Yeah, you, you don't really need to uh, post the entire document. You could uh, post an abstract that's easily di digestible on the website that would, uh, you know, give a good brand to the, uh, to the museum. Right. Rather than have the public wade through, you know, pages and pages of, uh, of the document. Yeah. yeah. There's really just a small portion of that that is the meat of it, right? Yeah. 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 Otherwise they can uh, file an FOIA for the, <laughs> for the entire document. <laughs> Indeed. Great, well, that was great discussion, y'all. Um, is there a motion to uh, accept this interpretive plan? A motion to accept. Thanks, Katie. Do we have a second? I second. Thanks, Kaylee. Um, all in favor, please raise your hand. All right, that is unanimous. Excellent. All right, next up, do we have any new business or board comments? If not, then uh, we can call this meeting uh, adjourned. Do we have a motion for that? Thank you, Tom. And do we have a second? Thank you, Dale. Um, all in favor, put your hands. And I uh, call this, uh, this meeting adjourned. Thanks, y'all. It is 521, uh, Joanne. And um, yeah, thanks y'all. Have a great day. Happy right. New Thank Year, you. everybody. Thank you very much. Happy New stay Year. healthy, stay safe. Bye everybody. Thanks, Bye. Kay. All righty, good Kim. night. Thank you, Brighton. You yeah, guys take thanks, care. You take, take care, care of that new baby. Bye. Yeah, I can't wait to meet that new baby. Yeah, I'll, I can show you photos at some point. He's okay. uh He's a he's a big one. He's a, <laughs> he's a brute. He's a brute. Yeah, he's uh, he's a big guy. And actually, gosh, um, our uh, my toddler uh, broke his foot last week. Oh no! Um, yeah, it's not bad, but he's in a boot now, and so we're kind of carrying him everywhere. And life is just crazy pants. <laughs> That's not helpful when you've got a yeah. That's not that helpful with that little baby at home either. <laughs> Well, best um, wishes to your wife too. Thank you. Yeah, we're we're doing out we're doing a okay. Um, great to see y'all. Uh, you take too. Care. Thanks, okay. Brian. We'll Thanks. see you soon. Bye. Bye. -bye. Let's see.